When the moon hits your eye Like a big pizza pie That's amore When the world seems to shine Like you've had too much wine That's amore Bells will ring Ting-a-ling-a-ling Ting-a-ling-a-ling And you'll sing Vita Bella Hey, Carl I, the Biker Guy here. I'm in St. James, Missouri at the Vacuum Cleaner Museum. We're going to go inside and take a walk through history of vacuum cleaners. This is going to be one of the best trips we've taken. I'm here in a room of vacuum cleaners that uh, date the uh, 1910s and earlier. Some of these are pretty interesting machines. Now, one of the things that I was really surprised with is that the early on electric vacuums didn't have anything to plug into. During the 1910s, vacuum cleaners didn't have electric plugs on them. So, uh, because we didn't have electric outlets in houses, so what do you think they used? They used an outlet like you'd use on a light bulb. So this is what's actually attached to this Hoover vacuum from the 1910s. Prior to an electric vacuum, you might have been using one with a bellows driven by the wheels. What you're looking at here is a vacuum that has a flywheel and basically what that does is like one of the toy cars that kids have today where they pull it back and release it and it runs forward. This is the same thing and it will create the vacuum to clean the rug. The vacuette with its flywheel made by the Scott and Fetzer company, was actually the forerunner of the current day Kirby. Hi, I'm Connie Douglas with the Vacuum Cleaner Museum here in St. James, Missouri. This is one of our agitators. Agitator came out in the 1910s from the Hoover Company. It was designed with the belt-driven motor, so the two went together. There were only one that came, had that feature on a machine until in the 1920s. And hi, here we are in the 1920s room. One of the best machines in the 1920s was the Airway. Airway came out with the very first disposable bag, and this is what it would look like. The machine is unique. Wherever the arrow is pointing is where you're going to have suction. Right now the arrow is pointed up, and so you're going to have suction in your handle. You have suction in your handle, you turn the knob, and then all your suction is generated down into your nozzle. They had it. A really cool attachment with this machine, which was called a feather renovator. With this feather renovator tool, you would take your feather pillowcase and attach it to here. The feathers would be drawn through the tubing, spun around inside of this attachment. The dust would come out the pinholes, clean feathers would go into the clean pillow tick, and it saved the ladies a lot of time and effort. The attachment itself costs $10.95. So that was like a whole week's salary for a man in the 1920s. In 1926, you could purchase this Delco hand vac made by General Motors from a Cadillac dealer. It was designed to help you keep your brand new Cadillac clean. They were so popular that when people sold their Cadillacs, they actually kept this vacuum. Another key machine that we have in the 1930s is called the Kenmore. It was called the Kenmore Bug Eye because once you turned it on, the headlights look like bug eyes. And here in the 1930s, some of our key machines, again, is the Hoover Company. The Hoover Company hired an engineer named Henry Dreyfus to come up with motor covers to give their vacuum cleaners an up-to-date modern look. In the 10s and 20s, the motors were exposed, and like you, I, you see here in the 1930s, you have the Art Deco period of look to the vacuum cleaner. I love our literature throughout the museum. This is one of my favorite posters where she's saying, listen to me, mister, I'm not complaining or nagging, I'm just telling you, I want $4.50 and I want it now. That goes on to tell that the Hoover Company sold the machine for $4.50 for your monthly payment. Over here is our Electrolux. Electrolux started in the 1920s and was imported from Sweden in the beginning. This one is our 1930s Electrolux. And this, some of the features on it was the moth crystals and the granulator. You would take the moth crystals, put them in the granulator, they would grind them up and cause a fog 
just like our exterminator does today. Another machine that we like to talk about in the 1930s was the Singer. The Singer was the first one to come out with a cord rewinder. The cord rewinder was a nice feature on the machine, keeps the cord up out of the way. You see a lot of cord rewinders today on canister type vacuum cleaners. The Electrolux was a great machine. It had it featured a cord rewinder, metal tooling, a dirt sensor indicator right here. You could have the trap door open up and the bag would automatically be pushed out and that would happen at half capacity or full capacity whichever the lady chose. It had the running boards on it later on they'll take the running boards off and then just continue with the wheels on the Electrolux. Another key machine that we love is the uh, Atlas here. The Atlas has fins just like a 1957 Chevy. If your husband has a 57 Chevy car, why can't the lady have fins on her vacuum cleaner? And painted a nice cherry red color just like her husband's 57 Chevy. The museum is set up in rooms by decades with period correct artifacts as well as the period correct flooring. In the 1960s, we have the Hoover Dialomatic. The Hoover Dialomatic was the first machine that came out with a clean air motor, meaning all the dirt and debris went directly up and into the bag and did not pass through the fan on the machine. It was also in the 1960s we came out with more plastics. They were lighter weight and more economical. Did you know this 1960 rainbow vacuum was actually the inspiration for this guy? In the 1970s, we came out with shag carpet, and shag carpet needs a little bit more attention. Kirby was great for that type of flooring because it had the rake on the machine, as well as a height adjustment to adapt to the different pile heights of the different shag carpeting. Now, I had one of these when I was first married, and you know why I had one? Because I used to sell these. When I first got out of high school, I was selling vacuum cleaners. There are three original employees still left with the Coney Manufacturing, and I'm one of those original employees. In 1997, when we moved into St. James and we started manufacturing vacuum cleaners here in St. James, we started in the old shoe factory building. We outgrew that building and moved into this building in 2003. We've made three expansions since we've been in this location. The blue vacuum cleaner is our one millionth vacuum cleaner. And then in 2008, we started our own injection molding area. Vacuum cleaner here was designed by one of the third graders that we had a tour group of about 100 third graders. And we sent them all home with papers to design their own vacuum cleaner. And we made three of the children's vacuum cleaners that had to do with the St. James Tigers here in St. James. Back in the 50s when I was a child, we would have the Fuller Brush Man come directly to the house and Fuller Brush Man would sell you almost anything. Hair brushes, brushes to clean with, sweeping brooms, all sorts of things like that. Now I had thought that the Fuller Brush Man had gone by the way of the uh, buggy whip. Actually the museum sells products made by the Fuller Brush Company. The museum has an amazing collection of vacuums from all eras primarily donated by its curator, Tom Gasco. Now much of his collection was from a famous St. Louisan named Stan Can, who appeared on the Johnny Carson show 77 times. I had a great time at the Vacuum Cleaner Museum, and I think Tom Gasco is absolutely right. Some of our earliest memories are being a child on the floor playing and mom vacuuming the floor. And maybe it touched a nerve with me, and I think it'll touch a nerve with you too. I hope you enjoy this video and thanks for watching.